This is Node's App UI, and in this video, we will perform crude operations by creating, compiling, and deploying smart contracts, and then connecting it with Flutter, making it your very first decentralized app. Let's start. First things first, make sure Node is installed on your system. If not, go to the nodejs.org website and install either of the following versions. Next, install Truffle globally on your system using the following command. Then we need to initialize Truffle in a Flutter project. Truffle provides us with a local development environment for creating, compiling, and testing smart contracts. Two main alternatives to Truffle are Hardhat, which comes built in with Hardhat Network, a local Ethereum network, and Remix IDE, a browser-based smart contract playground. For this tutorial, we will be using Truffle. After running the command, we have access to some folders and a file. First is Contracts, which stores the smart contracts in Solidity programming language. Second is Migrations, which stores the JavaScript files used by Truffle to deploy smart contracts. Third is Truffle config file, written in JavaScript, containing configuration settings for Truffle. To test our smart contracts, we can use the Flutter's test folder. Smart contracts are like traditional contracts, main difference being that the smart contracts are lines of code that automate the terms, whereas traditional contracts are terms enforceable by law and are described in a human language. Since smart contracts are stored on blockchain, there is no involvement of third party. They are secure since each entry on the blockchain is linked to the entries before and after it, similar to a linked list. Thus, hackers would have to change the entire chain to change a single record. Next, install the Solidity VS Code extension by Juan Blanco for proper code highlighting and indentation. If we expand the contracts folder, we will find a Solidity file already created, which is migrations.sol, where sol extension stands for Solidity a language in which smart contracts are written syntactically similar to JavaScript. This migrations contract keeps track of migrations done on the network. This is done by storing a number that corresponds to the last migration script found in the migrations folder. This means that Truffle will not run those scripts again while deploying. So in future, if you modify an existing contract, you will have to create a new script with an increased number, as the numbering convention is as following, where x starts at 1. Our contracts will typically come in scripts starting at 2. Let's type our first contract now, which is notescontract.sol. The first line we need to type is the license line. Not providing it will result in a warning because trust in smart contracts are better established if their source code is available. Making source code available touches legal copyright problems, so we need to provide machine-readable SPDX license identifier which can be chosen from one of the multiple licenses mentioned on their official website. Next is a pragma line which specifies that the code we type will work for Solidity version 0.4.22 and above till 0.9.0. This is done to ensure that the contract doesn't behave differently when a new version comes out which might potentially break our code. Finally, we create a smart contract using the contract keyword. This is pretty similar to classes. They contain persistent data in state variables and functions can modify these variables. You can even inherit it from another contract to implement specific set of functions. Inside this contract, we need to create public state variable of data type UN256, which stands for unsigned integer, meaning it is a positive integer with a maximum value of 2 raised to 256. Let's name it note count as it will keep track of number of nodes. A getter is automatically created on public state variables. Then we will create the skeleton of our note. This is done using the struct keyword. Inside this, we will define some properties of note like id, which will be unsigned integer again because it will get the value of note count when a new note is created. Then title and description, both of them strings. Then we need to keep track of all the notes in our DAP for which we will make use of mapping keyword, which stores data in the form of key value pair. It can be considered as a list of map, hash table or dictionary. The id is going to be the key, so we pass u and 256 and the value is going to be note structure. Then we specify its visibility which is going to be public and then name it. Then we need to create events. Events are ways to tell our client side app, in this case our Flutter app that something, some event has taken place on the blockchain. Basically the blockchain can emit events to which our Flutter app can listen and make changes in UI accordingly. This first event in our app is when a new note is created. So the event keyword is used followed by a variable name. ID, title and description with their respective data types are taken in the parameter. Similarly, we are going to create an event for node deleted. We will only take ID to delete a node. Note that events do not contain the logic for creating or deleting a node. For that, we need functions. So let's create one for create node. The syntax is similar to JavaScript. We write function keyword, then the variable name, and in the parameter, we need to get title and description because we will use these functions 
in client side and we need these inputs from user we use memory keyword here to temporarily store variables and their value alternative is to use call data but it is used for parameters of function which have visibility marked as external this one is public whenever the user creates a new node we want the node's hash table to get updated so we will set node set node count which will initially be 0 equal to a new node structure because we define that node's hash table is going to have the key as un256 and value as node structure then according to the defined arguments of node struct pass in the data then we need to notify our client app that the node has been created so we will emit the node created event passing in the required arguments again finally we will increase the node count by 1 so that we store the new node created in a different key finally we will create the delete node function similar to create node but parameter will be the node id that is to be deleted and then delete node set id the delete keyword just appears to delete but in reality it sets the variable to the default value for example variable with type uint is set to 0 then we need to emit node deleted event and decrease the count by 1 congrats on building your first smart contract let's deploy this to our local blockchain for testing for that we need to set up our migration scripts head to migration folder create a new script named as following and require the nodes contract using artifacts.require it is similar to nodes require but here it specifically returns a contract abstraction then we need to export the function that deploys our contract let's compile a smart contracts using the truffle compile command next step is to install ganash a local blockchain for running tests install it from their official website when you run the software you land on this screen it asks us to select ethereum or corda depending on your use case you need to select one for this tutorial i'll be going forward with ethereum create a new workspace name it and save the workspace having the setup we need to perform migration of our contract for that we need to edit settings in truffle config.js file remove everything and replace them with this code with this we specify host and port on which ganache is running link to our contracts directory and some optimizations which can be found on truffle's official website now we can run truffle migrate to deploy it if ganache is not running in the background we will get this error let's connect our flutter app with our smart contract create a file where all our business logic is going to stay we will use provider for state management and web3 dart for connection so install those dependencies create a class that extends change notifier then we will create node model in a different file which will have the same properties similar to the node struct id title and description then create a global variable of list of node called nodes which will initially be empty then we need rpc url which stands for remote procedure call which is a url which request for blockchain data can be sent to this can be found on ganache next we need to define web socket url which will be ws followed by the host and port name similar to rpc url then we need to grab private key of one of the accounts on ganache it's not advised to use private keys in code especially in production you should use metamask with wallet connect instead but we will look into it in some other video next in the constructor we will call an init function then create that asynchronous init function create a global variable named web3 client which will be initialized late and in init function set it equal to web3 client passing in rpc url then http client from http package install it in our project and finally the socket connector argument which will be from web socket channel package return io web socket channel dot connect passing in the web socket url casting it as string since socket connector requires stream channel of string return type then we need to create get abi asynchronous function as the name suggests it will get abi which is application binary interface a standard way to interact with contracts If we go to the build function we have a directory named contracts which came in after running truffle compile it includes json file of our contracts from which we need to extract abi property so we load the asset json file like this then convert the string to json then we need to create a global variable abi in the function we need to convert it to contract abi from abi json we extracted we will also create global variable contract address which can be found in 577 seven property inside networks property which is inside json abi now we need to get credentials so we will create another function with global variable creds which will be equal to it private key dot from hex and pass in the private key we globally set for the last part of our setup we need to create deployed contract assembling everything we have together 
and get access to the functions or variables that we created in our Solidity smart contract. So create deployed contract, create node, delete node, notes and notes count variable globally. We need to make a deployed contract with ABI and contract address. The rest of them are functions or variables. So we can make use of deployed contract to get access to these functions. Make sure that the names passed in parameters are similar to the ones in our contract. Simply call these functions in init functions so that they run whenever the constructor is called. Now we need to fetch the nodes. So create the function, make use of web3 client to call the function. We need to pass in the contract, which is our deployed contract function, which will be the node count and params as empty list since we don't need to pass in anything for node count. This will give us a list with one element, which will be big int. So we need to extract it and convert to int. Then we will clear off all the nodes in the list. After that, run a for loop from 0 to the total task and use web3client.call passing in the contract, the nodes function and params which needs to be a list and big int. So convert int and big int like this and store result in temporary variable. Temporary is a list with values of id, title and description at indexes 0, 1 and 2 respectively. So if title is not empty, we will add to the nodes variable a note model with id as temporary at 0, which will be big int converted to int then title and description. After the for loop, we will notify all the listeners about the notes variable change. Then call this function in get deployed contract. Go in the main.dart file, wrap our app with chain notifier provider, passing in node services and create property. But we won't see any change in our app. It's still blank because there's no note added. So create a function to add note, taking title and description from the parameter, to send data to blockchain, we use web 3 client.send transaction, passing in credentials, then transaction.call contract, passing in the contract, function to be used, and then parameters, according to the position of parameters in a smart contract, title, and description. Then we will fetch the nodes since it's not real time. Finally, bind the add node function to our UI whenever the add text button is called. Make sure item count, title, and subtitle in the list view builder are passed in correctly like this. Let's test the app now. Click on the floating action button, enter title and description, then click on add. We see a new list style appearing after a while, so let's implement loading indicator. If you're running on an Android emulator, you'll most likely get this error. To avoid it, do this. In node services, create a global variable named is loading set to true. In fetch notes, after fetching the notes, set is loading to false. In add note before fetching notes, set is loading to true and notify the listeners. Then in home screen's body, check if is loading is true. If it is, display loading indicator, else the widget tree. Restart the app to see loading indicator while the notes are being fetched. Create a function for delete note taking id as parameter and call web3client.send transaction pass in the credentials and then transaction.call contract with deployed contract, delete node function and for parameters, id converted to big int. Set is loading to true, notify the listeners and fetch notes again. Bind this function to the delete button and click on delete icon. The node disappears. Congrats on building your first decentralized app. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.